our love for you know special effects and monsters is what got us into this stuff. Stop motion was the thing that we loved most. We grew up with Gumby, Davy and Goliath, all of that stuff, plus the Ray Harryhausen. Oh, yeah, Ray Harryhausen stuff. working with Willis O'Brien. We lived in the Bronx, and when we saw King Kong, we saw him walking down the street in our neighborhood, and, and we asked our mom and dad to take us to the Empire State Building so we could see the crack in the cement they made. And that hooked us into monsters, and then I yeah. guess eventually we figured out how they did it. Well, and we started making little mini movies at home with yeah. Super 8 camera. I was, what, 10 years old and you were 12? That's how you get into it, you know? You, you fall in love with something and it changes your life. I'm a character development, character designer. Take the troll. It starts with a script, an idea, and uh, you start visualizing it. You visualize it on paper first. You start designing characters based on their description. I fill pages and I let the director or the client choose which one. Over a three, four week period, I generated like 150 variations of this character that we ran by John, the director. Well, can you make it dirtier? Can you make it fatter? Can you give it short hair? You know, can you give it bigger eyes? Took a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little troll, a gremlin. He had something in his head, and eventually we got to it. John wanted the simple narwhal design. Uh, he wanted him to pop up and say, bye, buddy, hope you find your dad. And he wanted the horn to come up like the Chrysler building. But because it was a live action film, I think our first initial reaction was that they wanted realistic characters. So I did some research and I figured out, oh, I'll make a little whimsical narwhal. So you see some of Charlie's drawings, they're fleshed out more realistically like a narwhal whale. And he went through a lot of variations. And John said, no, I want this little thing. And realized, you know what? He wants this. Yeah. This is cute. And John was saying, I want the fun and all the quirkiness of stop motion animation. So he said, oh, that'll be easy. <laughs> Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. Thanks, Mr. Narwhal. You take it to a three-dimensional stage, you know, so you can see it in full round. You can see how it looks front, back, top, and side. There's always a translation from the paper to three dimension. Well, that nose looked good in the drawing, but let's make it a little smaller, a little bigger. I sculpt these, what we call maquettes. These are like 3D study models of the 2D designs. And then from this step, we scale them up to the actual animation puppet size, and we sculpt the puppets. This is our walrus, and our polar bear, and our puffin. Now these two guys here, they're slightly different technique than the puffin. We cast them out of a flexible foam rubber material. It's just like sponge rubber, and this enables us to have a flexible skin that can bend. Now inside this character is a flexible mechanical skeleton. This is a, what we call a ball and socket armature, and it's made in such a way that it simulates the skeletal structure so you can bend and move the character. And then on top of the foam, we did the, a flocking technique to give it a fuzzy texture. So it's got this soft, fuzzy flocking on the outside. And the puffin was a slightly different character. This guy, to uh, simulate the mouth movements, we have what we call replacement animation, where we replace the beaks with different mouth positions to articulate different pronunciations. So when the puffin says, hey buddy, wanna pick some snowberries? the animator would place the mouth positions with these sculpts to simulate the pronunciation of the dialogue. Hey buddy, wanna pick some snowberries? So I went up north and worked with John in trying to block out how the characters were going to be photographed in, in a scene. These guys are just our stand-ins for a lighting reference. The gray ball is for shadows to figure out how the light is coming in from all of the different um, sources. It's like a funny game of pretending. You have to imagine what they're going to be like, what they're going to say, how they're going to move without them being physically there in the scene. Too far. And then we'll take them out. Too far. The real fun is when we animate. I guess we're going to pick this up after Buddy runs past the puffin and the other little critters. I work with the animators. There are people who physically move the puppet. They're the ones that, let's say, are on the front line under the camera.
the calculations and stuff alone on the animation was incredible. And then the physical demands of a heated stage, and plus keeping track of it frame by frame, and knowing that you only had one shot. Bye, buddy. Bye, buddy. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, buddy. Bye-bye. <laughs> 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 Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. Thanks, Mr. Narwhal. Bye. But we had an opportunity to figure out what our passion was at a very early age, I and mean, this is what we wanted to do. And when you do it, as an adult, it's fun. That's the key, to be able to uh, attach yourself to something that you love, to nurture it and make it happen. It's great.